are these people? Our next story mm -hmm. involves Substack, which mm. saddens me to no end. But coming to a Substack newsletter near you. Chris Best, CEO of Substack, puts out something, and I love I love the the owners, you know, the the management and leadership over there. How many CEOs do you know would go onto a social media platform and say, "Oh, hi there. What's the worst thing about my platform to you?" Our brother um, Rich. Our brother Rich nailed it. Not didn't nail it, but he put his. I, I found this hilarious. Hamish McKenzie, who is the CEO, the O O CEO. Why is he saying such a thing? Well, Rich wrote an article for the first time in 2024. He closed out 23 with, with something. So he says, dear Substack, hi, it's me, Austin. Oh, shit, that's not my intro. Hang on. I don't really quite get that, but he's got this weird AI. I still AI feel like Hamish McKenzie sounds like a, a fun PBS character of it. You know? Like the adventures of Hamish McKenzie. No, just me. Maybe. You know? So what he wrote here is they lies. Do, they do, there's the Caillou crossover, bro. There's that Caillou crossover, you oh, know what I'm God. saying? Caillou. Oh, God. Um. Um. <laughs> so you know? lies, damn lies, and Substack serving the status quo. So he says 2024 has been mostly a year of more of the same. Does the same apply to Substack, too? So he hasn't been around for a while, so he catches us up, and he says, after a short winter hiatus to respect other hobbies and pastimes, I've reappeared on the beautiful, unblemished face of Substack like a bad case of Berlin monkey mm -hmm. pugs. Love it. See what you did there? Don't worry, I wasn't totally missing during this period, though I didn't publish anything here in full form. Sorry to my one subscriber. I owe you 25 bucks worth of posts today. I did enjoy the notes platform mm -hmm. and continue networking with other writers and readers alike during this time in the U.S. and abroad. I witness horrors unfold. I crack jokes. I watch people implode. I met the sanest and the least sane. It was gratifying, and though it felt much like a spiritual rebirth of the 2016 Twitter heydays, I can only say it was refreshing and new, completely unique, quintessentially Substack, and most of all, organic. 10 out of 10. That is largely still unchanged, but we'll get to that. Unbeknownst to me, however, little else was changing. Substack was, as I had alluded to in 2022 and again pointed to in 2023, gladly showing fealty to the U.S. security state whims, desires, and narratives, singing their praises. One recent rainy evening in Portland, I was shown a note by Hamish McKenzie from me, this guy, and syndicate host, Indie News. It was both hilarious and tragic, and it summed up why I largely took a hiatus from Substack in the first place, Though proves why even bumbling idiots like I need to write and be here. I can't hide it. Let's mm -hmm. cut to the chase. Hamish McKenzie is a fool and continues to expose his political naivete, putting the brand at risk of being seen as the eminent deranged cranks blog host of choice. And in doing so, You're he a fool! yes, in doing so, he reduces the credibility of the other accredited and visible authors he wishes to solicit to the platform to become sources of revenue. What does he mean? Mm. Whatever does he mean about my beloved Substack? Uh, I think I, I trumpet and parrot and mirror a lot of his thoughts here. Substack is a platform versus a brand. As it stands today, it's an interesting evolution of a simple concept, unfettered speech, and the antithesis of an algorithmic host. You only saw what you wanted to. What? Ver yes. What? Yes. This is algorithmic host yes what? well meaning that someone that okay. they're they're pushing stories on you that they think you should see versus here you only see the the sub the the subscriptions and the feeds that you are subscribed to potentially initially right Not that's just what in he like means. chronological order right well that too but also yeah. who they're pushing you only saw what you wanted and very little of all at all of what you didn't it was a great space to whiteboard, create, and meet like-minded people. And while this concept remains largely untapped beyond Substack, they remain a fantastic space to do one's thing uninterrupted and with minimal downtime or platform quirks still 10 out of 10. The platform is stable, and as time goes on, features continue to be added, which overall increases quality of life for all. 
including creators who stood who couldn't stop pivoting to video. I, for one, welcome our 2013 approach overlords, actually. Thanks. Notes, videos, and gifts on Substack. Video killed the Substack start. Right? Notes, videos, video. and gifts. These are all fantastic and welcome additions. However, they come at a cost, and that cost is revenue model, where writers who solicit to pay a VIG to Substack or Square. All well and good. It's no App Store 30%, but it's something to keep the lights on in the Embarcadero. That's where Substack headquarters is. No harm, no foul. It's not like Substack's getting rich on the back of deranged pro-war imperialist propaganda, right? Well, sort of. <laughs> we don't exactly make any bones about it, but some of the world's most well-read, or least read, depending on who you choose, propagandists have found homes on Substack in recent years, like Anthony Vindman, or Alexander Vindman, and who's the guy, uh, Kin uh, Adam Kinzinger, are here. Right. Mm. I've already made a note of this in prior work. Substack has a corporate media narrative problem and so far hasn't done anything to address it. To the contrary, they seem to have leaned into it, trying to fill the space that a BuzzFeed or a Vice might have held in the last decade. And in doing so, they end up hitching their wagon to bizarre posts, finding bedfellows in depths that have only been plumed by the likes of Vice Grad 24 and the Trump administration. Substack was essentially degrading itself and the user base by partnering with and increasing the visibility of such inauthentic or intellectually bankrupt content. In the past year, they've tried to build themselves out as a brand desperately clinging to the notoriety of passing celebrity as it wafts through the platform. A stench of unearned importance. I love it. The reason Substack has had little success in such attempts, including the Substack election, which we covered in September, is because the quality of celebrity that it continues to promote is frankly not credible. We've had the likes of Nate Silver, Mike Cernovich, Dan Rather, and so many more, Dan Rather being the least of the three, though his own decades of work in the service of corporate and state-backed propaganda at CBS speak for themselves. So he says, most things in life boil down to personal preference and how we understand the world based on prior experiences. Now, without getting into the weeds of what makes a man tick or the interpersonal history of Hamish, I need to start this part off with a 737 max sized caveat. <coughs> he says, I don't know Hamish. I would love to sit down with him someday and ask him all the interesting and proper questions of what makes him and why he arrives at the points in history that he does. I don't have such access, and frankly, I don't think that anyone would be satisfied with the answers given. Let's just presume he's a Mary Sue, an everyman, who can do everything and has no flaws, omnipotent, and don't need no man. So what's new with Hamish this month? Well, and has anything changed? Is he still pitching hucksters, promoting garbage, except that it's fact? Well, uh, he has a sit down here. Great to see Tim Mack in conversation with Peter Suderman tonight. Celebrate the first anniversary of the counteroffensive, that's their Substack publication, discussing everything from the loyalty of Ukrainian war dolphins to how to fund reporting from war conflict dolphins. zones. Oh, the good uh, shit. Also, good shit. Flipper at the 2. Museum. The Revenge. Right? <laughs> so, Rich, uh, I had sent this post. This is the post I sent to Rich, and I said, oh my God, can you believe this? This guy is an absolute Ukraine shill, a total NSA propagandist. It's a joke. And so Rich says, thanks for spurring on my next piece. How do you manage to step in such giant piles of horse shit over and over? If you remember correctly, Hamish was the reason for all of this sub stackers against Nazis hysterics back about six months ago, where a bunch of people got up in arms about him interviewing one guy who used to have <coughs> neo-Nazi views a long time ago. So. He gets into who Tim Mack is, All right? Mm. Well, but first, Hamish continues to promote open propagandists as if they are credible journalists or authors. I'm not sure what's great to see someone who writes such incredulous bullshit, but Hamish seems to feel that way. So let's take a br deep, brief look at the man he's pitching to us. Yeah. Twin revolutions, Ukraine's Maidan and Taiwan's Sunflower. So he's this guy works for the intel community. 
Right off the bat, and just one month ago, Tim was singing the praises of a U.S.-backed coup in Ukraine in 2014 that led to the deaths of more than 40 in Odessa and thousands more across the now war-torn country and a failed attempted one in Taiwan, shocking nobody. Tim seems to be a proponent mm -hmm. of U.S.-supported narratives and political actions, including covering Ukraine, Syria, and dolphins? Weird. Oh. Yes. This piece about dolphins is largely taken from Alexandra Hay at Kiev Independent, a known propaganda rag. No, I'm not making this up. Mm. If you read these in chronological order, you get the scene of a very paranoid, sleepless man writing whatever inane ramblings came spewing from Budinov's asshole on a given day. But it isn't simple sleepless paranoia due to Russia bad and Iskander keep pulling on my head. No. Tim is clearly dedicated to his craft of becoming a U.S. State Department spokesperson, as shown in other writings, where he's just fear-mongering about Russia, students without sunlight, the underground school kids of Kharkiv, all paid substacks, by the way. You have to pay to be able to even comment on this asshole propagandist. He only allows an echo chamber. Substack newsletter near you. Only allows an echo chamber of people that pay him to be able to comment. The juxtaposition of children hidden in underground shelters thanks to Ukrainian war crimes from 14 to 22 against claims of Russian war crimes in 24 with a sprinkling of Syria bad Assad gas owned people for good measure is just the icing on the fucking cake. When Ukraine used white phosphorus... It's just a fucking backpack. Mm -hmm. Well... You don't know. When Ukraine used white phosphorus, it, it smelled like poison. In the last two years, Russia called attention to this. When Ukraine used cluster munitions yeah. in 2022 and 23, Russia called attention to this. When they used banned pedal mines from 2014 to today, Russia called attention yeah. to this. As did even Bartlett, as did we. Tim Mack never seemed to pick up on any of this. Why is that? Hamish, what is it exactly? Not to? Oh, wait, no, sorry. Well, maybe. What exactly are you promoting here in Tim that I couldn't find by simply reading deranged posts on Telegram or in U.S. weekly news from U.S. supporting apparatchiks? He has 10,000 subscribers. What do he fucking do? How many of them are even authentic? What substance does Tim Mack offer Substack beyond incomprehensible lies about military dolphins, which I should remind viewers were supposedly Russian just a few months ago, and because Russia equals bad, military dolphins equals bad? Does Tim Back offer a Substack a path to growth long term, or does his presence and highlighting on the platform alienate users further and drive them away? He says, on the surface, I don't have anything personal against Hamish. To the contrary, I hold him in high regard in most cases, as do I personally. I offer a harsh critique when it comes to his management of the platform because it impugns all of us who use it. That's right, because we care. When Hamish promotes a deranged propagandist or theorist pushing U.S. State Department lines as if they're gospel, he doesn't show respect to the users who've witnessed the narratives change, unfold, and then become rebooted several times over the years. The same tired lines, the same accusations from silence, the same hypocrisies over and over and over again. And that's why they're at Substack, because corporate media cast them aside. Hamish at best seems oblivious to this. A Homer Simpson of political sausage making, a guy who gets his understanding of the world largely from corporate news headlines and narratives, rather than looking at the actions and trails of blood money. In that comment is no judgment, just observation, like many. Hamish is a product of his environment, and as much as he or anyone wishes to change that environment, he's formed by it, by it or regularly blocks large parts of it out when inconvenient. We... Westerners instinctively take the U.S. government's word, even though it's been shown to be without credibility for the last 80 years. Decades of wars fought to support U.S. economic and strategic interests as if they're humanitarian inquisitions on the basis of fabrications and outright lies. Israel, what? Yeah. Millions of dead people for some sanctimonious idea of American hegemonic supremacy in reality to support American corporate interests. As we've described before, American corporate interests supersede all human life at all costs, any cost, including basic liberties like speech or basic concepts like truth. 
All right, Hamish's folly is simple. He's trying to win over the audience that causes the problems that require a Substack in the first place. His Substack is a response to a bad call out, corporate press. The correct response is organic speech, not micro propaganda. In promoting Tim Mack and others named above, among myriad others I didn't mention in this piece, Hamish shows fealty to the corporate state. Hey, Mussolini said that's fascism, brotherhood. Right, the corporate or state brotherhood that would gladly see his platform stricken off the internet as a bad case of thought crimes against their feelings. This is what I've been trying to say. They they would get rid of Substack. They've been trying to beat Substack, and they haven't been able to beat him. So they're like, we're just going to go there, infiltrate it, and trash it. Sounds like what Elon Musk is doing over at Twitter. I wonder if he's even aware that Maya Robots exists, an official U state, Ukrainian state kill list of both Ukrainian and non-Ukrainians state would like to see killed. I wonder if he understands that things aren't as they seem, that hitching his wagon to a brazen propaganda such as Tim actually hitches his wagon to Mayorovitz and the deaths of peaceful activists burned to death in Odessa during Maidan. I wonder if he even cares. And that makes me not care about Substack. I might not have a TV network or a Republican administration on my resume, but I can go to bed at night not knowing I didn't openly fraternize with this bullshit. I could just as easily go by web hosting and form a platform with blackjack and hookers, scratch the platform and the web host. Uh, so he's dealt with good platforms and shit, short-sighted CEOs before. Twitter was great, or at least the concept of it was to him until he interacted with more Jack Dorsey and saw how the U.S. used Twitter as an instrument of color revolution. As a U.S. tool, which then became a part of a tool of partisan censorship. Twitter became useless to society and people left in droves. Bots had to be made to substitute the lack in activity. Elon pedo guy Musk bought it and all hell broke loose. The bots changed partisanship. You saw more inauthentic tech posting rather than political posting. And of course the now famous death throes of X dead on arrival languishing in the shadows of relevancy it once had. Well, shadow bans are there are real, and now we've got the porn bots that are here. Whenever somebody posts something, and I'm I'm working on a piece about this. Whenever posts somebody posts something that is questioning the U.S. intelligence state, all of a sudden you'll see a porn bot response or a crypto bot response, which is then designed to deboost that post because Twitter's algorithm automatically looks for those posts and deboosts them. Rich's opinion is that Substack is doomed to repeat the same outcome. Hamish will eventually be caught up in a political quagmire tugged in all different directions until his true allegiances are formed. I expect this to take the form of censorship, as all platforms do, and has already been made clear by me some time ago. He wrote something way, way back. This statement by then Substack spokesman Miss Cheng Messervy seems less from her own views and more from the point of Hamish on reflection, and I'd like to apologize to her. <coughs> I know she recently found work at Activision Blizzard King, and I wish her the best in her endeavors in the toxic white male gamer world. So Hamish, my problem isn't with Substack at all, but with your naivete endangering the rest of us, both on the platform and humans globally, as you seem to be promoting deranged pro-war propagandists. You have a problem and may wish to separate your own preferred political pony riding and the platform executive fiduciary duty at the very least, if not re-examine your, your entire belief structure. In an era of Disney eating crow on DEI and people becoming refugees and people becoming being unwilling to fight and die for American corporate interests abroad, you may wish to be careful openly politicizing the company this way. After several years of discoveries about U.S. lies and crimes against humanity in Ukraine, it would be unfortunate to see Substack turn into yet another operative hangout dedicated to supporting those endeavors. So he also, by the way, mentions that his hiatus is now over and he will be syndicating and publishing over at INN Stack as well. So be sure to check us out. Appreciate that, Rich. Love you. This is a long one, but... He had a lot to say, and I think it, it really is relevant because this is one of the few havens that we've got left to publish. And now 
the shit libs are coming for it too. And don't think that the anti-Semitism bill isn't going to link in with this too, that they're not going to try to go after people that are publishing on Substack and claim that they're anti-Semites and go after their money and their ability to earn. All right. Um, shit, man. I still had a couple more. Um, oh, I did want to mention, here's something that Hamish wrote. A writer should never have to pay to send emails to subscribers. I agree with that. Free to publish matters. Substack's business model is important as the product. As a reminder here, it is. It's free to publish. This makes it easy for anyone to start and try things. It only makes money when publishers make money, which means they're incentivized to help us succeed and disincentivized from doing things that might deprioritize our subscription revenue. Publishers make money primarily through paid subs, which means we're rewarded for respecting trusted relationships with the people who care about our work. And we own all our content and our mailing list and can easily export it all at any time, which holds them accountable to serving the publishers. And tell all your friends. That's what Hamish had to say about that. Um, I also wanted to, to talk about Haibi and Hamish. They held, you know, <laughs> Rich talked about them kind of being elitist. They got frozen out of the correspondence dinner. They said that their original plan was to pay for a couple of tables at the White House correspondence dinner and populate them with substackers, but they turned them away. So what did they do? They they held their own party called the New Media Party, but Substack isn't just new media, it's new voices, blah, 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 blah. Substack is a big fuck you to the establishment. Many of the people in this room tonight are Substack writers. Everyone else, I bet, is a Substack reader. And if you don't know what it is at all, please stop helping yourself to free drinks. Very funny. Right? But this also was... A little gathering of elitists. Was everybody invited to this? If you were in the D.C. area, I wasn't. I, not that I would have shown up, but... Mm, it's very mm -hmm. weird. They only want a certain group of people to hang out with them and to participate in their in-person events, it seems. Unless I'm just not on a mailing list somewhere. Um... Well, so, I think Kaibi stuck his foot in it like yesterday or whatever. He did. Sizing fucking um, Hamas nonsense. Well, yeah. He uh, he said okay. it was great to be at Samzat's not White House correspondence dinner tonight. I had to look up what is Samzat. Uh, and what it is is a system in the Soviet Union and countries within its orbit by which government suppressed literature was clandestinely printed and distributed. So the dude's literally like Soviet red baiting about yeah. Substack because, well, Congress has been red baiting Substack for a while, so it kind of fits. Support independent media. We need it more than ever. I love you all. Good night, fam. Good night, fam. Mwah. Ciao, baby.